You're thinking about buying a Tesla, but there are five mistakes that you want to avoid. We're going to talk about all of those critical mistakes if you are thinking about a Tesla or EV in 2023. So let's get right into it. So these are five points I wish I knew before I took delivery of my Model 3. And this is also advice coming from my brother who owns a Model Y. Let's get into point number one, and that has everything to do with the range. Is there enough range in a Tesla to buy one? Well, this is an exercise that I wish I did in more detail to really understand which Tesla is right for me. And here's what you wanna do. So point number one, charging. You can see right here on the Tesla app, the majority of my charging happens at home. And if this sounds like you, you plan on charging at home, that's gonna give you consistent charge every single day you plug it in. That might not be enough. Can you account for emergencies or detours or time on the road stuck in traffic? Well, you're gonna have some good peace of mind by doing this exercise. So number two with the range is you wanna go on Google Maps, type in your residence and your home address and see how many miles on a daily basis Factoring in common errands like groceries or what have you, you may be surprised that those miles don't add up as high as you think. It's not often you're gonna calculate how many miles you drive on a daily basis. So this will help you just understand, is the rear wheel drive enough for me? That is what I have and it is my daily driver. I drive it all around town and it is plenty of miles. So do that exercise in point number one. Point number two, and this one is critical. One of the five mistakes that you want to avoid is not knowing how to save even more money on your Tesla. For example, here in Pennsylvania, for qualifying purchases, you get up to $3,000 extra on top of that EV tax credit from the federal level. So go on the Tesla website, plug in your state. Not a lot of folks know this is on top of that EV tax credit or that it may exist. So you don't wanna make the mistake also, there are deadlines. In Pennsylvania, I had six months to file for this state rebate, and also there are rebates and incentives from my utility company. These are all things that I did not know before I took delivery, but I figured it out and I wanna pass it on to you. So point number three is probably the biggest financial factor when determining, well, do I want to buy a Tesla versus a gas car or a hybrid or what have you? This one's important. But before we get to point number three, if you could please, please subscribe. I'm trying to do this full time to bring you even more videos. And if you are considering a Tesla, the best accessories, if you can click those links in the description, it helps the channel. You can purchase those products or other products off of that link. Let's get into point number three. Point number three, what is the lifetime cost of owning a Tesla if you're factoring in budget and finances? Is it better financially to own a Tesla versus other cars? I have the rear wheel drive model three and based on those finances and the charging cost, the recent numbers were ran against Tesla and other cars. Check out this graph. The Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive cost around 63 cents per mile compared to a Toyota Camry, which came in at 52 cents and a BMW 3 Series, which was about 80 cents. So you can see it factors in depreciation, taxes, insurance, maintenance, and fuel. But let me touch on this. Cost of ownership, gas versus charging. Well, it's plain as day, tracked for you. This is brand new in the Tesla app and you're gonna get this, so check this out. Over 12 months of charging, Tesla tracks that for you. And for me, my 12 months of charging came to around $800, give or take, depending on my driving habits. And you can see here, I've saved over $2,000 versus comparable gas prices in my region. And Tesla tracks all of that for you. One of the biggest peace of mind benefits when comparing point number three, and stick around, we're gonna get into point number four in just a second, is that maintenance. I had $0 in maintenance. My charging cost, we just talked about. The only thing I have issues with are, of course, like any car, my tires, and replacing those from time to time just because I opted for winter tires it comes with all season tires your Tesla but since I live in Pittsburgh Pennsylvania that is the only cost I've had with maintenance over 27,000 miles so let's get into point number four now we already talked about the range we just talked about those rebates and cost of ownership 
So now let's get into point number four, and that has everything to do with safety. Keeping you and your family safe is likely one of the highest priorities when evaluating which vehicle to purchase. Well, you will be happy to know that the brand new Q3 numbers of 2022 were just released. Take a look at these safety numbers. In the third quarter, we recorded one crash for every 6.26 million miles driven, and that is when you're using autopilot technology. But if you opt to not use autopilot, Compared to normal cars, Tesla is still much, much safer with one accident in 1.71 million miles compared to a normal vehicle, which one happens in every 652,000 miles. So your cameras of your Tesla, whether you're using autopilot or not, will put on the brake for you if there is a sudden slowdown in traffic and you happen to not notice to avoid an accident. This has happened at least once in my Tesla. It has saved me from injury, it saved my child from injury and a collision with another vehicle. The brake was put on for me before I could even move my foot to prevent an accident. But there's a few other things here, like the sentry mode, the GPS. Sentry mode will keep an eye around your car while parked if you have any concerns about safety. Also, GPS. You can see the location of your Tesla at any time on your smartphone. That's pretty cool. You can always track if your Tesla is where you left it. And also live viewing with premium connectivity, which is $9.99 a month. Again, premium connectivity, you can see a live stream of those cameras on the outside of your car and on the inside to keep track of your Tesla when parked and in that sentry mode. So two other points here that you're not gonna find on other vehicles, you can actually put a pin that is required to drive the vehicle. If you have any concerns about safety or losing your key card or what have you, you can put a secure pin that is required before you can shift your Tesla into drive. Point number five, these are 100% mistakes I wish I avoided. If I got another Tesla, I know I would make sure to avoid these specifically. So let's get into point number one of this number five. Teslas are susceptible to curb rash. And if you're unfamiliar with what that is, if you're parking parallel parking or what have you, too close to the curb, you could scratch your rims on the curb. Now you might say, well, that's the driver's fault, but Teslas are designed a little bit differently than other vehicles. That rim of your wheel is very, very flush to the tire. So typically, if you're used to maybe accidentally bumping your rubber tire into the curb, well now I wanna make sure you avoid that. I have scratched my rims because of this design. We're really talking about protection. I wish I knew about protecting my vehicle and something unique to Tesla. I want to pass this on. This is completely unique and probably worse in a Tesla than other vehicles I've had are those flush handles. So if you have a ring on your finger or even if you don't and you're going towards the car with your lanyard full of other keys and you get into the car and you push it open with your thumb, I have scratched my door handle with my ring without even knowing it until it is too late. So now I have all these scratches on my handle and I really, really don't like it. They do sell paint protection film. It's a stencil, basically a clear sticker, if you will, that you apply around your door handle so that when you're opening, you don't have all these little micro scratches. I just think it looks really ugly. That's just for me but I wanna pass on that tip for you. Last but not least, when it comes to point number five, I wish I knew about accessories for my Tesla. And all the best accessories are down below in the description, but specifically floor mats. No matter which Tesla you get, you're not gonna get durable floor mats. Now I know if you get the performance models, they'll basically throw in some carpet floor mats, but those are not gonna keep the rain, the mud, the snow, whatever it happens to be to staining your carpet. So make sure to check out those links in the description. There are all kinds of high quality and affordable, durable floor mats and other accessories, things I wish I knew before I took delivery, so I had them on day one. So hopefully I can bring you even more videos with my goal of doing this full time, so I can bring you even more content. So I kindly ask that you subscribe so I can grow the channel and do that for you. So again, the only way I know that you enjoyed this video is to drop a like so I know that you're out there watching. Again, this is Matt from Funk to Trunk. We will see you in the next video.